can't hold back. I thought this would happen. Naruto x Boruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections is a comprehensive ode to the world and characters created by Masashi Kishimoto. Its immense cast of playable characters with exceptionally well animated movesets and maps ripped straight from the anime with loving detail look better than ever before, but no level of source material accuracy can save this absolute mammoth of a game from hollow single player content and a stale combat system that hasn't meaningfully changed in 15 years. To support a roster that's aptly described as a literal storm of ninjas, Ninja Storm's combat has to stay simple. This makes it approachable, but there's also no pot of gold to chase at the end of its learning curve like there is in better fighting games. Combos flow like a watered-down version of Devil May Cry. You can add variations to your moves, but most of the time you'll be pressing the single attack button until your combo ends with a flashy finisher. That's where the real game begins as you'll need to understand the ebb and flow of blocking, attacking, grabbing, and moving to get up close and personal again so you can lock your opponent into yet another devastating flurry of blows. But that's about as deep as your regular attack options get. Instead of mastering highly technical combos, the Ninja Storm games emphasize savvy resource management and patient play. Using special techniques consumes chakra, and you'll also need to keep an eye on your substitution gauge, which allows your character to escape any combo or attack at the push of a button. But you only have four substitutions at your disposal, and using multiple will cause your gauge to refill very slowly. This all adds some extra sauce to the otherwise one-note combat as players dash and jump all over its 3D arenas. Each character has three magic abilities, and just about anything goes here. Kiba teams up with his trusty Puchakamaru to rush down and drill his opponents into a pulp, Kisame shoots shark-shaped water bombs from a safe distance, and Raikage A slams down with thunderous force, creating a massive shockwave. The problem is that you could swap most characters' voice lines and models with another and not see a huge difference in their playstyles. Most characters draw their movesets from the same small pool, albeit with different coats of paint. So with 130 playable characters, many being duplicates of the main characters, choosing a character based on their playstyle is less important than choosing your favorite from the show. However, with only a few characters from Boruto, most of whom are just grown-up versions of other playable fighters, the roster feels barren. For something that's billed as a definitive celebration of the whole series, Ninja Storm Connections falls disappointingly short. Ninja Storm Connection seeks to further streamline combat for people who just love the show by adding a simple control mode. By pressing a single button, your character will control itself, deciding when to dash, use special moves, and execute combos, leaving you to simply move and block. It's also highly customizable, allowing you to select what's automated and what isn't, though it's not something that'll ever live up to an experienced player. Speaking of which, playing online has been pretty smooth thus far, though results will definitely vary depending on your and your opponent's internet quality, since Ninja Storm Connections disappointingly doesn't use rollback netcode, instead opting for a peer-to-peer -peer connection. This makes for a less reliable online experience. Netcode aside, the multiplayer options offer a solid range of online features including failsafes for players who disconnect during a match or engage in other toxic behavior. For a fighting game with such broad appeal, that's a fantastic approach to curbing the poor behavior that permeates a lot of the casual arena fighting genre. While Naruto and Sasuke were occupied with Haku, Kakashi was also locked in mortal combat with Zabuza. Ninja Storm Connection's single-player story options are its biggest letdown. The history mode lets you poorly relive the story of Naruto and friends from the beginning of the original series, which follows him as a kid through the end of Naruto Shippuden three years later. Unfortunately, this approach to that story doesn't do it any favors. Parsed out like a half-baked flashback, history mode truncates the events of Naruto and Shippuden in slapdash fashion. Instead of cutscenes, subtitled stills from the anime pop up in between the occasional fight, with sound effects like clashing kunai and some sporadic screen shaking as the only attempts to add flavor. I'm sure it's challenging to condense entire arcs spanning dozens of episodes of television into roughly 40 minute long chapters, but I'm equally sure it could have been done in a more interesting way than this. These movies are narrated by the Naruto world's godlike figure, the Sage of Six Paths. His detached perspective is great in a vacuum, but pretty boring in the broader context of a series that involves so many distinct characters and standout performances. Having no further use for his two underlings, his plan was to murder them along with all of Team Seven. These moments play out more like YouTube lore videos than interesting scenes. Our disembodied narrator often reads quotes like he's a teacher reading a book to a group of kindergartners. When a person has something precious they want to protect, then they become genuinely strong. Deflating the tension of otherwise intense moments from the anime. 
It's just not a good way to retell this story. I'm gonna win! Special Story Mode, on the other hand, is a predictable and rarely exciting original story that follows Boruto and Friends, written by series creator Masashi Kishimoto. The first three Ninja Storm games boasted entire open overworlds that represented smaller scale versions of the shinobi world where Naruto was set. They even layered extra side missions and hidden collectibles on top of that map, reinforcing the sense of place that makes the world of Naruto so noteworthy and actually making you feel like you're a part of it, not just looking on as a passive observer who occasionally picks up a controller to shoot out a Rasengan. In contrast, part of the special story mode is set within Ninja Heroes, a fictional in-universe video game based on the characters and events of Naruto, and that's where things really go off the rails. It's an online multiplayer game where Boruto and all of his friends gather to hang out. Think Fortnite if it featured skins based on war heroes instead of Master Chief and Chun-Li, but for this fictional world. There's almost no discernible story in Ninja Heroes, and the only thing Boruto and company do in it is fight. But you're not even forced to use these newbies. In fact, you could play most of this mode's fights as any character you want, because the full base roster is available. It's as confusing as it is strange, but never strange enough to be compelling. For example, one of Boruto's friends makes his in-game avatar that of Daedara, a former member of the Akatsuki, a murderous terrorist organization that was responsible for killing droves of people, and nobody bats an eye. You have no artistic sense, Boruto. Ninja Heroes is quickly revealed to be a Trojan horse that's part of a greater plan to take over the world, but there's just nothing interesting about it until the characters leave this digital space and realize something's amiss. It's about as silly as it sounds, and mostly just acts as an excuse to toss loads of purposeless fights at you for a large chunk of this story. There's even a section that tries to make fun of how unapproachable and content dense some MMOs can be by throwing a long series of fights at you, but it quickly becomes the very thing that it sets out to make fun of. They were going on about how this game has what's called a beginner's wall, and it's not actually that fun until you get past that. Thankfully, this side adventure doesn't dive headfirst into that empty swimming pool. Instead, it eventually gets somewhere with intrigue and plots to plunge the world into warring chaos, but its first third is irredeemably dull. Characters are at least fully voiced in this mode, and there are several well-animated cutscenes. The opening one's a particularly stunning display that left me excited to see more. I just wish it could have maintained that initial sense of action and intrigue. Naruto x Boruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections may have the biggest roster and flashiest graphics in the series, but its unenthusiastic retelling of the source material in what should be a celebration of Naruto, Shippuden, and Boruto falls flat. Even when it's fun and nostalgic, there's little here to make me seek it out over past entries that have basically the same fighting system and better single-player stories. If all you want is the newest, biggest, and shiniest way to watch your favorite shinobi battle it out, Ninja Storm Connections at least delivers that. But just because it understands the assignment doesn't mean its execution gets high marks. For more, check out our reviews of Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2 or Persona 5 Tactica. And for everything else, stick with IGN.